All right. Are we ready? Yeah. Let's go. Okay, All right, let's go. Welcome to Invibes Podcast, home of good music, good libations, and good vibes. Now here is your host, Eric Milletz, and producer, Ernest Stevenson. Uh, hello, hello, hello. Uh, welcome back to M-Vibes Podcast, uh, episode two, season five. So excited. Uh, this is going to be our first virtual or online uh, interview that we're doing for this season. Well, I guess any season. Uh, so so first, bear first with first us if it doesn't go 100%, you know, perfect. Um, uh, Ernest and I had an event this past weekend. Um we were at Red Clay's uh, Crumble Rumble, uh, where they brought out, I think, eight different crumbles plus three surprise ones. Um, I was in the back room spinning vinyl for like five and a half, six hours. Um, I'm glad I brought enough vinyl to go five and a half, six hours. I thought I was only going to stay for four, but I stayed longer. Why not? Um but we drank a bunch of really good, good stuff. Uh, we actually popped open a bottle from Dissolver up in Asheville. It was a, uh, a dry cider aged in bourbon barrels. Mm. Pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. Um, what am I drinking? Oh, I got um, I got Blake's uh, Watermelon Heat Wave. This is something new. And uh, no Jameson today. Got some uh, Sailor Jerry, so... Yeah. How about yeah, you, Ernie? I, well, being at the house, uh, of course, I can I can drink things that we can't get at Tommy's. So, drinking uh, Space Walker. Mm. And I'm, I'm, I am su- I'm surprised it's not uh, Sierra Nevada. Yeah, yeah, that'll probably be later. Yeah. I, had I, one also, for, I also forgot to get a mic from you on Saturday. I know. And also, I got oh, Russell. Russell was there at 10. So uh, we have a special guest here today. Uh, we have uh, Lindsay from the group Patio, who is also my niece, um, uh, my wife's brother's sister, uh, plays in the yep. kick-ass group Patio. Uh, you guys are originally from Brooklyn, though, right? And then you moved out to California? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's correct, yeah. Uh, what are you drinking today? So I uh, I knew I was going to be on the podcast with some beer insider aficionados, mm-hmm. and I knew whatever I could scrounge in the back of my fridge would not be uh, up to par. So I am instead drinking uh, a bootleg oat milk white Russian oh, okay. Um, okay. from a mug from my first solo vacation. So this is what I drink out of whenever I want to feel like really cool um, <laughs> because I was really proud of myself. I went to Mexico City by myself, and I was so I felt like so on top of the world. So. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's my punk rock drink from my punk rock vacation mug. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, White so- Russians, man, I haven't had those in forever. Last time I had them, <laughs> last time I had them, I think I went to the Knights game. I think I don't remember. It was a, it, it was a, yeah, well, eight, <laughs> eight, eight, eight of those things, and then I went to the game, and then shouldn't have done that. Anyways, you um, want to you want to know something really crazy? Is that in Glasgow, Scotland, like they. Like white Russians are like the city drink. Like people love, and you can get any kind of white Russian at like so many different bars. Really? And there's whole bars that just serve like eight kinds of white Russians, which is like it's so cute to me that they, this is like sort of like been really embraced in the local culture of Glasgow. What all is in a, a white Russian? R- r- it's uh, some kind of milk or cream substance, mm-hmm. and then a Kahlua, you know, coffee liqueur mm-hmm. thing, and vodka. Yeah. So, okay, but it's well, really just like variations of like milk, vodka, and something okay. um, to make all the different kinds. Awesome. <clears throat> so let's talk about Patio. Uh, first of all, congratulations! Um, your last two albums made the uh, Rolling Stones uh, best indie albums of the year, right? Yeah. That's uh, all- yeah. It was super exciting. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. yeah it's been. It's it's still kind of crazy. Uh, to see like your face on rollingstone.com it's yeah. so wild <laughs> <laughs> i used to buy that magazine back before we had internet that it was that spin uh alternative press and uh mm-hmm. what else did i i i forget what else i read but i had, i still have those all in my garage i can't bring myself to toss them in the trash <laughs> oh sure yeah i mean I that's should. an important archive yeah I, I i was a rolling stone subscriber for a couple of years i i want to say i got like a free subscription for a year 
with like a guitar that my parents bought me when Mm. I was in high school um, and then kind of kept it going for a little while after that. So when I go through my parents' attic and garage, I still find some like little, you know, bits and pieces of those magazines. And let's point out, Lindsay's originally from North Carolina. So, yeah. That's true. Yeah. (laughs) Hickory, North Carolina. Hickory, yeah. Yep. So that's why. um, How did the patio get started? Uh, I briefly read it on, you know, on your guys' um, website, but uh, we'd rather hear it from you than me. Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, so, so it's kind of, so we often summarize it as like patio started as a joke mm-hmm. because that's kind of true. So um, it started, I want to say it was like 2013 or 2014 when I, I met Lauren who plays bass in patio. Alice, who plays drums, and I have known each other since school. Um, so I kind of worked a lot at our radio station, and she was responsible for booking artists and stuff at our campus show house. Um, so we, you know, we knew each other. We were both engineers. Um, I met Lauren in New York. At, you know, as at that time, there weren't a whole lot of ladies at the gig. Um, <laughs> you know, it's yeah. pretty. It was pretty male scene. Um, I would say it still is, but it's really come a long way. Um, from kind of 2012 2013 era so we would kind of recognize each other as like oh the girl at the gig hey good to see you the only other woman again um Mm -hmm. and so we had a couple mutual friends and she didn't play music but she was writing a lot about music at the time um and has you know has had a, a long career as a music journalist and she said that she had been talking about starting a band like as a joke and she said i came up with the name patio and it's going to be very sort of like millennial lavender and like you know kind of apathy etc and she kind of had this concept and at the time i was playing in another band um that i was actually describing to my partner yesterday we practiced for three years and played one show um and our songs were not bad uh but it was just it was one of those things that was more like a social outlet really than anything else Mm -hmm. um but we did have some good songs. Um, but that had kind of stopped existing um, because I think one of the members was like, I don't want to practice every weekend for three years <laughs> anymore, <laughs> which is fair. Um, and then uh, so I was talking to Lauren and she said, I have this band concept. And I was like, we should start that um, because I wanted to play in another band. And, you know, all of our friends were musicians and playing all these cool DIY shows and stuff. Um, and so I kind of taught her to play bass Um with the like two songs I knew how to play and, but or the two songs I knew how to play on guitar and bass at the same time. Mm-hmm. Um, and Alice had just started learning drums around that time. Um, and I said, Alice, you should be in this band. And she said, what? And I said, great. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I am pretty sure that Lauren and Alice met at band practice. Like I'm pretty sure because there was a, one of those sort of hourly studio rental places mm-hmm. that we would go um, the one constant of my life in New York where I lived for about 10 years was going to this one block in Bushwick where the hourly space was. And then we graduated to like our own space that we rented um, after that. But the hour, I'm pretty sure Lauren and Alice met in the hourly practice space when we had our first patio practice. <laughs> um, and so we practiced and worked on songs for about a year, I want to say, before we recorded like a short, you know, two song demo and then started playing around town. That's cool. Um, I've noticed a lot of patio songs are very bass heavy for, uh, yeah. Intros too. So, yeah, Mm -hmm. totally. Yeah. We, so we're kind of intentionally minimal, um, in our instrumentation. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have a lot of patience for like figuring out effects, like, you know, guitar pedals and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like I have a a pedal or two that I play, but I honestly mostly play just like totally clean. It's like me, a tuner and then amp tone. Um, which is, has its pros and cons for sure. (laughs) But, um, so I think really what, where we try to find the intricacy in our music is in like, what is the sort of the like essence of how many different melodies we can kind of cram into this? Like I almost think of the melody sitting in the drum, the bass, the guitar and Mm -hmm. the vocal in our songs. And so really having, I think of the bass as primarily a melodic instrument in our band, as opposed to explicitly a rhythmic instrument. So that's where we kind of like lean on that and and lead in with that a lot. Uh, so what what made you guys move from, or at least you, from mm-hmm. Brooklyn to California? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. So um, 
the short answer is a man. Um, so oh, my partner, okay. uh, my partner Alejandro has, uh, we've been together for like a really long time now and he has always just wanted to live here. Um, to the point where I want to say, sometimes I summarize when we met as him introducing himself and saying, hi, I'm Alejandro and I'm moving to LA. And I was like, that sounds great for you. See you never. Um, yeah. I had no interest in moving out here. Um, but I think I got to a point in my career. So like my day job is working in like local governments working on sustainability and innovation. Mm -hmm. And I got to a point where I had worked with the entirety of an, of a mayoral administration in New York, that admin administration was coming to an end. I really was kind of looking for what's that next, like interesting step in terms of like my sort of day to day, day job. Um, and also, I mean, I grew up, you know, my dad was active duty in the Marine Corps for 20 years. I'm used to bouncing around and yeah. I've been in New York for so long that I was kind of feeling like a little bit tapped out, mm -hmm. uh, honestly, and and ready for a change. So especially because we it was for the, I guess, the middle of the really intense pandemic period that I decided to move. Um, we had already made the, the majority of the second record um, kind of separate, which is different from how the first record was written. The first record is very like written, you know, songs were written in the practice space, played live, completely redone, you know, really road tested. Mm -hmm. The songs on the second record had, were never played live before we recorded them. So oh, really? okay. it's just a, yeah, it was crazy for me. I'm, there's still things on that record where I'm like, oh my God, I would totally change that. Like if, we, if I'd known <laughs> what it would now, be yeah. like to play that. Do I know? Yeah. Well, um, you, and so we knew we could do, do it. A so, different yeah. version yeah. live. I've seen Bruce Springsteen exactly. do that a million times. Yeah. yeah. And that's really fun for me. It's mm -hmm. just kind of like, I don't think of songs as ever stopping changing, mm -hmm. which drives the rest of the band absolutely nuts um because i'm constantly just like what if we like change the pacing of this or like what if we added this or you know put a stop here or something and they're just like oh my god oh <laughs> but for me it's just like it's always evolving have you been to any good good shows out there in la you know i don't go to as many shows as i used to um because i also i live here and in Palm Springs. So I okay. kind of am in both places. So I only really go on weekends and my partner plays drums in a few bands. So I've seen him play a few times and okay. that was great. Uh, <laughs> so what have I seen recently that I really loved? Um, I saw a really great jazz performance in Palm Springs last week. Um, Palm Springs, and I'll Florida? The name or of the guy. Palm Springs, California? No, Palm Springs, California. Okay, right. Yeah, California. I was like, wow, yeah, that's a long 45. commute. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's still a little bit silly, but it's not that long. Okay. Um, so I saw a really good, and I'll pull up the name of the guy who I saw play. And then I want to say my favorite show that I saw last year, like the most surprising show I saw, was this British band called Sorry, um, who I wasn't expecting to like a lot. They're like, they're like a band that is really popular with Gen Z, and I'm definitely not in gen z but i went to the show it was kind of on a lark and it was incredible really? it was so okay. cool yeah it was really neat um i was and they like played well and they were like really cool and i was just like and it was kind of a smaller show it was like a club show um and i was like wow cool like that was great yeah. <laughs> i was really impressed i, I love those um, small show venues yeah man. Especially totally. all the, like like the big places now, it costs way too much to go to a concert. Yeah, it's so expensive. I know it's just like fifty dollars before you even like get there, and I'm just like, oh god. So I don't go to that many kind of like larger theater or bigger shows. Um, so it's mostly just club shows. That's like the only thing I have patience for anymore. Yeah, now. me too. Uh, Twin Temples playing here on Saturday. Oh, fun! Really? I'm on call, but I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm, yeah. gonna, I'm gonna try and go. So. Yeah, <laughs> you'll be on call from the gig. Yeah, <laughs> if the phone hey, rings, I'll make it work. I'll have to go. Yeah, I'll yeah. be there in three hours. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we had uh, we had the whole family over uh, right after uh, Christmas, and your oh, yeah. and yeah, your, my dad was telling me. your dad walked in with a patio shirt, and I was like, "Nice oh, shirt, man!" Yeah. <laughs> and we started talking about it, and it's funny. Like a, a lot of the members of the family I had no idea, uh -huh. and I was oh, like, yeah, "It's yeah. like, man, sure. and she's awesome." That. That band's great. And I brought out all <laughs> oh, your vinyl you. and showed it to him. It was awesome. Yeah. Oh, thank you. That's really nice for you. Now yeah. I appreciate it. you and Kathy have been holding it down since day one. And I really respect that. Yeah, um, awesome. And I appreciate it a lot. I well, know you guys are like so plugged into like local and independent music. So it really means a lot. Yeah. Well, and that's, that's what we strive on with this um, podcast too. Uh, a lot yeah, of absolutely. Local bands, not just here in Charlotte. Uh, we're, think we're about to do an interview with uh, Catbite, who are out of California. They're a ska band. Cool. 
Um, nice. And the Golf Cats, who are out of uh, Garden City, Michigan. Um, oh, cool. So that's going to happen soon. Hey, let's play some patio there, Ernest. Uh, what should we play first? Lindsay. Oh man. Well, I guess since we were talking about the origins of patio, maybe we should play luxury first since that okay. was kind of the first, that was actually the first song that we wrote in this, in the practice room as a group. I love that picture of the band. Is that, is that bread or, or a, a bottle of wine in, in that bag? You know, I want to say it's a lot of falafel. Okay. I want to say it's like a bag full of falafel sandwiches. Okay. If I remember correctly. Mm-hmm. 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 I love it. You know, we have uh, another friend who uh, who has a band out there in L.A. Maybe we could get them to open for you guys or something. Uh, the uh, oh, yeah. I know you saw him with Kathy when you were in oh, uh, right, Brooklyn. The, oh, uh, What's yeah. the name? Yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember. I, um, yeah, no, that that was so fun to see them with Kathy at the Knitting Factory. That yeah, was really was, a trip. I was insanely jealous. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. But the, no, I was going so. through my. Uh, Celiac shit then. Like, yeah, I was, that's I was, true. I was sick and we had and I just had, no had a idea. huge yeah. pasta dinner. Yeah. Because we went out for I, Italian food. So you must not have been feeling great. No, I could not oh, sleep that, that night. And actually, oh, uh, no. I, I think after we had, you went to, uh-huh. or was it before we had, you went to um, Other Half Brewing. And then I, mm-hmm. w- I went back to the room and I drank the rest of my growler. So yeah, I didn't get much uh-huh. sleep that night. My body yeah. said, oh, no. fuck you, man. <laughs> Yeah. Well, now you know. Yeah. Uh, you drink so a growler? Much better. It was a half half growler. You know, oh. one of those little small ones. Oh, a howler. A howler. So yeah, I had gotten. <laughs> I had gotten. <laughs> it name. was funny. I got a growler. It has a name. <laughs> when I left, because actually Troy had brought one over to the house, so I packed it in my bag when I flew out there. I got it filled up. Plus, I got a bottle of some bourbon barrel aged something. So. Mm. Excuse me. Yes. Before we left, uh, I had to drink the bottle because I couldn't bring it on the plane. Oh, yeah. Yep. So uh, yep. between me and Kathy, we had to chug that bottle before we oh, left no. the room. <laughs> oh my god! And Kathy well, is a it's... Kathy's a yeah. little lightweight when it comes to that stuff. So she was very uh, happy no. the whole yeah. the whole uh, Uber drive back to the airport. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's also um, it's New York, so you don't have to drive. Right. So you don't have to worry about that. Man, we were fools when we came up. We we all came up in Nikes. And then we that thought. Was right. It was winter. It was all yeah, cold. We thought we'd go across the Brooklyn Bridge in Nikes. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> we no. took about 10 steps and said, oh, we need to go find a target. Yeah. yeah. And we went more Yeah, boats. it's pretty windy, too, on yeah. the water. Yeah. Have you guys been. I know your dad told me you guys toured mm-hmm. Europe. Yeah. We did, uh, yeah, which are you, are you was so tour wild. Anytime soon, or you know, near? we don't have anything. We don't have anything planned, but we're kind of keeping our ears out. I mean, so after I moved to LA, our drummer Alice moved to Berlin, which is she's having a great time. Really cool city. Germany. Um, so Germany, yeah. yeah. So we're kind of on opposite yeah. opposite sides of the globe. Uh, so finding a time for us all to get together yeah, online is really hard. hard. Um, but um, so I think kind of managing, and so she's there for graduate school. And so managing all of those things means we basically need, and this is kind of just a reality. And I'm sure this is something that a lot of the folks that you talk to talk about, just the reality of like being a working musician in 2020, whatever year it is, is you kind of need, you know, like an anchor show of some kind to help you mm-hmm. make it work financially. Um, and, you know, especially because we're all at points in our lives where it's like, you know, none of us have unlimited time off of work. You know, we all have like expenses. Um, you know, I've got a car payment now, which I've never had in New York. It's like, oh, Lee, why do people buy cars? Huge mistake. But um, I love my car, but it's very expensive. Um, but, and I bought a 
Okay, sorry. And I bought a used Kia, and I'm like, oh my god, it's so expensive. Um, but um, you, so you know, things just kind of add up. So we're kind of hoping to see if maybe like a festival comes together, or like you know, some vape company wants to pay for us to fly somewhere and play yeah. or something, you know. And I, I think uh, I think kind of like selling out means really different things in 2024. You know, we were our, one of our songs was just used in like a like a fashion show for Hermes in their like men's collection, mm -hmm. um, which is crazy. But we're still like so deeply in debt from the making of our record that we'll probably like never actually see a dime <laughs> of like the money. Um, just because it costs so much money to like print vinyl and put stuff out. And um, so we were just like, yeah, that'll pay for a tour. And we're like, actually, after we do the math, it might not <laughs> so, yeah. so we'll see i mean i anticipate we'll probably play a couple of times this year um whether that's in the u.s or like maybe in the uk we had a really great time playing in london would love to go back there um you know we've never played on the west coast it, well we played we played one show i lied sorry we played two shows right before the pandemic in la and san francisco but um in terms of you know people who listen to our band who we've never played in front of you know we've never played in the southeast you know we've never played you know the sort of like north carolina tennessee georgia circuit mm -hmm. love to play down there come to charlotte um, and play the milestone i would love to yeah. um so i think we just got to kind of figure out the right yeah, time that everybody's awesome. in town and make it work yeah um damn it i forgot what i was gonna ask you oh have you opened for anyone or is that anyone cool open yeah for you guys so we we love opening for people because when you open for people, you are not responsible for bringing everyone to the show. <laughs> so right. you kind of just get to have fun. Um, and so that was like our favorite role to play in New York was like in New York. It was usually the Bills. Well, when we started playing, the Bills were like four or five bands, which is mm -hmm. nuts. Those are long shows. Um, but then by the time we sort of before the pandemic hit, it was like three band bills. Our favorite thing to do would be to be like the direct support for a touring band of some kind. So we played for all kinds of bands that we really love. Um, right before the pandemic, we played before this band called Dry Cleaning, mm -hmm. which is a very cool, they, it kind of sounds like Don Cab plus like Life Without Buildings. Like it's kind of like a very cool, even keeled, sp like speak singing with like, just like mathy craziness going on underneath. I love dry cleaning. I think they're super cool. Um, we When we went on tour in Europe, we went with our good friends who are in a band called Deeper. Um, who recently signed a sub pop to do they're kind of like a post-punk band from Chicago. We think their songs are great. Um, if you, I kind of talk about, I describe their music as like, so I, I have a soft spot, especially for eighties U2. So this to okay. me is a compliment. Um, but I, I say like, if someone had never heard the Joshua tree or Octune baby by U2 and tried to imagine what it might sound like, it might sound like my friend's band. <laughs> like, really? it's just like if you'd never heard it, those are two heard amazing albums, it. though. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, and it's kind of like it's kind of like the Cure U two, but also like happening in 2024. I don't know. They might hate that description, but like that to me, I'm just like this is what <laughs> I wish. Like or like, and you know, and as coming from somebody who really likes those albums, like I'm just like if I had never heard those albums, and I just imagined like if you had to describe those albums to like an alien from Mars, like I might hear the description and be like, oh, so this. Um, so I I really love them. Um, I always recommend them to people. Um, who else have we played with that I like a lot? I mean, ton. We got we've gotten open for so many really great people. Um, one of our early shows was opening for the Pylon Reactment Society, which is sort of like really? the reconstituted Pylon, um, which I want to say is mostly just the, the singer and then a few other like Athens session players. Um, but that was extremely fun um, playing with them at like a tiny, tiny little club um, in New York. And then some other ones. We The biggest show we ever played, I think, was playing with Les Savvy Fav in Brooklyn uh, in Bushwick. That was fun. Um, I like that venue. It was like definitely big for us. Um, I think. But, I think. Uh, last time I saw you, you tell me <laughs> you told me you saw Axel Bronson all over. Uh, oh yeah, Brooklyn. yeah, everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I would yeah. love to see Axel Have yeah, you? Yeah, it was super fun. Yeah. Have you seen him lately? No, not lately. <laughs> he's jacked up, man. He went and lost weight. Yeah? He's all muscle no and everything. Oh yeah. Oh, he's... I, well, then maybe I have, and I just don't recognize maybe, him Maybe. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Is he if he's hanging out in LA? I mean, I live in like the strip of LA, 
the strip um <laughs> this one little neighborhood in LA where like every time I walk down the sort of main strip of my neighborhood I feel like I see four people from New York so um oh, okay, yeah. it wouldn't be unlikely <laughs> to sort of run into somebody out here but yeah I would say my favorite band in the past like couple years that opened for us is this band called Sour Widows um they're from the Bay Area they're from Oakland and they are so cool <laughs> it's these like two people who kind of like do guitar and like vocal harmony. Um, and it's like kind of heavy. Um, and, but it's like really heavy, but sort of kind of like almost country style melodies and that kind of thing. I love sour widows. They're like my favorite band. (laughs) I tell everyone so anytime they come to town, I drop, I drop everything. And I'm like, I have to go to the sour widows gig. I am obsessed with them. (laughs) I'm like, they're super fan in LA. I'll have to check out sour widows. I was going to, yeah, that they're down, really sick. I, I think you would but like them. If I listen to the podcast, I was looking up true. again. Um, now, <laughs> yeah, I know a lot of bands, when they're on tour, they make most of their mm-hmm. money from their merch. So mm-hmm. is there any plans oh, yeah. for any shirts and or, or more vinyl yeah. or any singles or anything? Yeah, it's a great question. So we're getting ready to put some shirts online that we got made for our release show and our Europe tour. So we have a few left over. um, And so we have kind of like it's an all blue and black shirt. Um, But but yeah, you're right. We made most of our money. Like, you know, the the main reason why we didn't lose all of our money on tour was because of merch. Um, Yeah. Um, excuse me, sorry. Um, and so, yeah, the merch really came in handy. Also in Europe, we oh, didn't cool. realize this, but now we know people um, people love to buy records direct from the bands because they yes. save on shipping. Um, so we sold so many records in Europe. <laughs> and so that was cool. Um, also because those are the heaviest uh, things. So it's great to sell oh, them. True. Yeah, um, so you don't have to you carry them. <laughs> plug them They're back. very yeah. heavy. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, um, and I we were doing a, like, you know, the... I was like, go ahead. I'm sorry. I would say I, I buy a shit ton of mine on one of my shows. Nice. There's a, yeah, that's great. And, and most time it's something uh, exclusive that's only sold at shows. Yeah. So, uh, sure. The Bronx, right here behind me, um, they had brought out um, their second album. They did a uh, oh, cool. picture disc, but they only limited eight copies per show. Uh, wow. And I got there. It's funny. They're called the Bronx, but they're from L.A. So yeah, I was gonna say yeah. <laughs> that's funny. Yeah, uh, they're one Very of cool. my favorite current punk bands right now. So yeah, awesome. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, I'll have to check them out. I don't know. You're very steeped in the punk scene. It's interesting because, like, if you ask the different members of Patio what we like, we have so little in common it's hilarious like our music tastes are really different (laughs) like very divergent um lauren is our really like our classic scholar of punk rock like you Mm -hmm. know the sort of the all of the classic lineages that i don't even know if i could even you know rattle off whereas i kind of you know grew up listening to like country radio um Mm -hmm. and like queen (laughs) um and then once i got a little older and started listening to like music on my own um, Kings of Leon are from Nashville, which is where yep. we were living when I was in high school. And I became, I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. Like what they're doing, what is this that they're doing? Right. And so I got they, really into that were, kind of like 2000s indie thing. Yeah. A lot of people, you know, once they got big, kind of say, you know, <laughs> screw them, which I'm, yeah. I'll admit, I'm, I do the same damn shit. Uh, oh yeah. I'll totally. So, yeah. love a band forever. And then, you know, <laughs> they start getting on the radio and everyone loves them. Uh-huh. You're like, ah, oh, screw it. I'm done. Yeah. <laughs> it's not <sighs> for me anymore. Yeah. Kathy makes fun of me all the time. She goes, it's still the same <laughs> music. I'm like, no, not a bad dude likes it anymore. I don't like it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Well, they're, I mean, in your defense, their music did get bad um, after they got really famous. They had... Yeah. That, that album, that fourth album is like the precipice. And it's like, there's some songs on there where I'm like, ooh. And then after that, I kind of fell yeah. off a little bit. But I will stand by, like, I will stand on the hill of those first two albums being like indie rock classic yes, records, personally. Absolutely. And I will arm wrestle and probably lose um, anyone on that. But um, so I was listening to kind of like that early 2000s, like indie music. Um, I also have sort of like, you know, pop leanings that I like to listen to in terms of just like, vocal styles or melodies and vocal production. I got really into K-pop over the pandemic. There's some like really cool, especially the like girl groups in K-pop, like a lot of R&B songwriters from the U S started writing like for, for Korean groups. Um, And so you hear these like 
crazy melodies and like these really insane chord constructions that would like never fly on us radio because a lot of stuff that that kind of is popular yeah. here is a little bit more simple or it's like more rhythmic or like you know it's different but there it's like very sort of like melody forward and just like insane <laughs> so i feel like it's a symptom of my like my brain on the internet for this long in my life it's just like i can only listen to music that is like so maximalist um but yeah so that so that's kind of like where more i sit more on this sort of like melody heavy side and then alice really you know she's like our our scholar of of like house music and techno and like you know dance music and those kind of things but also really loves like you know indie that is very sort of like instrumental and layered mm -hmm. and textured and things so we kind of all bring really different like sonic influences to the table which is really fun when you're writing a song and it works and so hard when you write a song and it doesn't gel for a while like we have a song called routine off of the new record um and that song like we couldn't we were trying to write that song for two years but i just couldn't i couldn't like I couldn't get my brain to click with what Lauren was saying her reference points were for it. And I was just like, I don't, I don't know what to play. Like, I don't, I don't know what to do. Like, <laughs> cause we are all largely with some small exceptions, we're all largely re responsible for writing our own parts in songs. Okay. Like we'll give each other their tips and directions or like I might come to Lauren and say like, here's a guitar part I have. Here's a bass part I think that goes well with that part. Um, but you know, we kind of, we all largely have like mastery of our domains, so to speak. And so when Lauren comes with the song, I have to write the guitar part. And in that case, I was just like, and she was like, you know, it should, it should feel like this and sound like this. And I'm just like, that means nothing to me. Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> and so it took us forever. And then actually the thing that cracked the code was when we were, um, we had all seen the Linda Ronstadt documentary, Sound of My Voice, mm -hmm. like not that long before. I love Linda Ronstadt. She's like a huge influence of mine. But, Absolutely. Um, and and so a bunch we've each kind of seen it separately and we were listening to you're no good like on loop being like there has to be something we can mine from the because she was like maybe the song should feel like you're no good um and i was like there's got to be like a little move and so i think i actually took the guitar line like you know there's some something kind of clicked in my head when i was listening to i can't remember who plays the guitar solo on that song um but the guitar solo on that song and I was like ah finally <laughs> but it had been years of her being like it should feel this like punk dance and I'm just like what like I don't get it <laughs> so we finally figured it out eventually it worked out yeah eventually um speaking of Kings of uh, Leon on uh, Saturday mm -hmm. I had uh busted out um Mumford and Sons' first album, oh, yeah. and we were, me and Ernest were, um, mm -hmm. myself, Ernest, and my friend uh, Brent were talking about the evolution of Mumford and Sons, how that first album oh, was sure. very, very folky and country, right. to their last album, I just went completely pop and flopped on them, but, yeah. but that's <laughs> weird, because they're completely gone now, and um, that yeah. was a band, what happened I, to got, those guys? I got, I got, I got Kathy into that band, and she listened yeah. to that first record over and over and oh, over. Oh, sure. I think, I think the second album, too. And then, you know, it just went to almost electronic and poppy, and they, mm. I don't know, man, it sucks. Uh, but they oh, were, bummer. again, one of those bands that got big, and, you know, their mm -hmm. concert seats for Nosebleeds was $200. I mean, like, no, sorry, guys. Yeah. yeah. It's got right. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty nuts. And, you know, and you feel for people because, like, you know, we also, you know, that we don't tour very often. And we didn't even when we were in New York because we got to be a little bit spoiled and be mm -hmm. like, well, everyone just comes here. So we're just going to stay here. And then if people want to come, they can come. Like, <laughs> so it was a very yeah. sort of spoiled New Yorker center of the world attitude. We did go on one tour or like around when Essentials came out. But on this tour, I mean, it's just like, you know, the expenses really just add up. And so when you start yeah. thinking about especially like shows with a with a crew and like the venue rates are so high and now venues take merch cuts, you know, we're really lucky that that hasn't happened to us yet because we're not we're, we're not playing the fancy, the fancy venues, the but um, <laughs> no, not yet. Uh, but I'm sure the merch cuts are coming. Yeah. Um, either that or we just like pretend I'm like, I'll speak French. Bye. Like, Stay away from <laughs> like, live nation venues. Live yeah. nation. Well, live We've... nation owns everywhere. Like they've yeah. bought everything, Pretty even much. the small clubs, they yeah. own everything. Um, they recently and it's changed like, I mean, their policy on that too, though. Yeah, I saw that. And they were also doing, they were like, they they now have like guarantees or something that they'll give mm -hmm. smaller touring acts, which like all of that is great. It's, but it's like, you know, I talk about that with some of my other 
musician friends and we're just like you know okay live nation standing in for like a functional social safety net like you know it's like if, if only there were actually ways to make this not sort of like a, a hemorrhage of money and so like i i totally like i'm sure that there were there were a lot of people making a lot of money off that Mumford and sons tour but i'm sure also like if you you know at this point now i'm like man i, I wonder how much money they were actually clearing from, from that because like that actually was probably pretty expensive. Like, yeah, <laughs> so yeah. I don't know. I, I mean, mean you, you hope at, at ticket prices like that, that the artist is, you're just like, well, I'm not going to pay that money, but I hope whoever pays that money, at least you're taking home some of it. But yeah. you know, you, you can't be sure about that anymore. I don't know. I mean, even with, um, and I don't, I don't want to get off, off topic here, but uh, <laughs> like Bruce and Aerosmith and all those guys <laughs> were coming through town. Yeah. Bruce Springsteen, nosebleeds were three to four hundred dollars <gasps> even Ooh. sit even sitting behind the stage Yikes. was over two hundred dollars and i'm and you know they did an interview with 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 bruce because mm-hmm. his fans yeah. were pissed and yeah. bruce said he was all right with it i'm like oh come on man i don't oh. know if you, i mean i was i was yeah. raised on, on bruce uh um, sure and i i wanted to take my daughters because uh yeah. when brooklyn was born uh mm-hmm. Jungle Land was was playing in the room. Oh, nice! So that's kind of become her song. Sure, and then right. Dawson, when she was born, and this was not on purpose. This is just a song mm-hmm. that was playing. Uh, yeah. Was uh, waiting on a sunny day. So we really oh, wanted wow. to take the girls to go see yeah. Bruce, but I'm not uh-huh. paying like five grand to take the kids. Yeah, to the I mean concert, that's man. like yeah, that's yeah. so expensive. Wow, yeah. dang. But yeah, that's really crazy. Aerosmith, you know, I was going to go to that. Um, mm-hmm. Right nice. <laughs> um, when I was a kid in high school, man, I was in love with mm-hmm. with Aerosmith. Uh, you know, yeah. not so much anymore. I'm trying to make mm-hmm. this arm like all the bands that I liked as a kid and all that stuff. Nice. But oh, uh, awesome. but they were doing, you know, the same deal: nine hundred dollars mm-hmm. for a ticket, two thousand dollars mm-hmm. ticket. Yep. And then um, he lost his voice, so they had to cancel the whole <laughs> damn tour. <laughs> Mm -hmm. oh my god i mean that can happen yeah well especially like during covid and everything it's just like tours would just get canceled or just like we saw that would happen a lot that was like this year yeah yeah yeah. 2023 that they yeah Yeah, wow oh sorry yeah didn't last year there was like yeah there was another big tour recently that got canceled i want to say i can't remember whose it was but it was somebody else who like lost their voice was it maybe like pearl jam I want to say maybe it was the Pearl Jam tour Ooh, that like they either canceled a bunch of shows or like they had to cancel the tour because yeah. anybody lost his voice or something like that. Just you know, like that's I don't know. One of the '90s grunge bands I never saw mm-hmm. was Pearl Jam. Mm. I've I've seen just about everyone else, but uh, yeah, never got a chance to see Jam. Pearl Jam. Man, I would yeah. mean I wouldn't say no. Um, I would sure. definitely maybe not for nine hundred dollars though. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I'm a yeah, I, I like that. cheap seats. So it's funny. Uh, I don't. Yeah. I think I talked about Twin temple earlier today mm-hmm. and yeah. uh I, I guess you're you're right with uh live nation and the mm-hmm. price because this was the first time we went online to go buy mm-hmm. one and it said online mm-hmm. 2750 and you, you were mm-hmm. i was we were expecting fees and everything right nothing it was straight up 2750 wow. i'm like wow that's that's great that's pretty cool yeah no, I've yeah, seen it's 20, so nice 20, when 2750 is actually 2750 <laughs> yeah um i'm trying to get Kathy to go. She's like, what is it? I'm like, it's nice. doo wop. It's satanistic to do wop. <laughs> it's doo wop, yeah. I'm like, they do stab people nice. and strip blood on them. It's, it's, it's like <laughs> war. It's like war, but, yeah. but you can dance to it. <laughs> That's a great description. Yeah. <clears throat> That'll be fun. You said that Saturday? That Saturday night, yeah. Nice. Uh, Very cool. Who who did we go see? Oh, we went to. Um, Skylark, Ernest and I went to a, it was a weird night. So they had a band, <laughs> they had like five, five bands. Mm-hmm. And they were all different types of metal. So you had okay. black metal, you had death metal. And I think the last two bands were thrash metal. Uh, okay. Deceiver, which we're going to have them on the podcast. So. Oh, and, nice. Yeah, um, Man, they were awesome. But the lead singer's guitar went out halfway through the show, so he had to. Oh, come out oh that's such a nightmare. I hate that. That's happened out and to me twice. Hype up the crowd and let it back up wow. halfway. Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Sorry, but yeah. yeah, that's. But he actually that's got to, to get down on the floor. Presence. Yeah, he did. Oh yeah. my god. I, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see, I don't know if I could do that. Our stage presence is like pretty reserved, um, which is something I've kind of just been like 
should it not be? I don't know. But that's kind of like part of our, our sort of, that's kind of what works best for us. And I think feels most authentic to like how we play. Um, but there were two times that my guitar went out when playing once, um, well, once was I just like busted a string on the show that I put in my head as like the most cursed show we ever played. It was at the knitting factory actually where Kathy and I saw the knits. Um, and we were playing, it was like new year's Eve of the, like when it was becoming 2020, and so the show was like sold out. We were playing with this band Cloud Nothings, who are pretty cool. Um, they're, you know, they've they've been doing it for a while. They're kind of like punky indie rock, I guess. Um, but they're cool. I like their music. Um, and then I can't remember who the other artist. Oh, Field Mouse was the second. And so we were playing first. And you, once we got in there, you could immediately tell that the sound guy wanted to be anywhere but. The knitting oh, factory on I New Year's hate. Eve. He did not want to be there. And it's like, you know, I don't blame him. And like, you can't blame anybody. Like nobody has to have a great time during that. It's like not his job to like entertain me, but like he was not having it. So like that's factor number one. Um, we thought we were going to play at like 830 because, um, you know, we're opening. So we thought mm-hmm. we were going to play really early. And we got there like for sound check and everything. And like no one is there. And we're like, well, OK. And so then we finally find the sound guy who again, this not having a great day. Um, and he was just like, Oh yeah, you, we don't want you guys to play till later. And we were like, okay, well like, like uh, what time? Cause like, we also are just like, well, as soon as we play, then we're going to go get our favorite sandwiches from across the street, have a beer, then come back and watch the rest of the show. Cause like once you're done, you can like hang out and relax, but like mm-hmm. until you're done, you gotta, you're all business. Yeah. And, um, and so he was just like, I don't know whenever and so we're like okay so we're uh, sitting around for like five hours and we eventually it's like 10 30 and the room is full no one has gone and we're just like can we play like <laughs> and so we finally get up on stage to play um because i was like i can't if i wait anymore i'm gonna like fall asleep like i don't know we've been sitting <laughs> yeah. here for so long i was like just let us play um because i guess they wanted the main band to like be playing at midnight but i'm like uh, like okay. starting their first song at midnight yeah. like at this at this rate they're gonna be starting their first song at like 12 30 yeah. um and and so, um, so I, we get up there finally after all of this rigmarole and hullabaloo and whatever. And I break my A string on the first note of the first song. Oh, and man. I, especially at that time, I'm not like, so I would consider like the instrument that I'm most trained in is like singing. I've been singing mm-hmm. in choirs and all that kind of stuff for like my whole life. Um, guitar. It's like a, a newer instrument for me and writing on guitar too is, is still like fairly new. Although I've been doing this band for 10 years, but at that point, um, a lot of the songs I'd written really kind of center around one string, the A string, <laughs> because like, I don't really know how to play. Um, and so I break that string. And so I have to like wait and like somebody else is maybe going to like, let me use their guitar. And then it's a whole thing. And then the vibe is all off. And then we like finally just like stumble through the rest of our set. And like, you know, of course nobody's had anything to drink at this point. Cause we're like trying to stay awake, but we're just like, it was just sloppy and it was just a huge mess. And then the rest of the show just like goes downhill from there. Cause it's like the, the whole place is full of people. I describe as, as teens, um, which Aww. is basically any person of any age who's acting a fool. I've described them as teens. <laughs> <laughs> so um, room is full of teens. I, we like, we go over behind the merch table and it's like kind of, we're kind of like slip sliding over there. We're like, why is it so slippery? Turns out people had been vomiting behind the merch table all night because they were too drunk because it was New Year's uh, Eve. And no. so it was, just like, yeah, it was so bad. Oh, and then of course, man. like we, we all, we all know how 2020 went um, yeah. really badly. So we were just like, it was just like the whole yeah, moment. Nah, that was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Makes so that sick. was time number time number weak, one weak that my I'm sorry. Oh that no, funny. sorry. Oh, I no, should have no, double no, checked no. with you, but yeah. Luckily we were able to clean it up. But um and then the second time my guitar went out, I was playing a guitar for a couple years I, that like um that had it was like it had been modified by like other like you know friends and stuff like that. And so it was it didn't have like the best wiring. And so one time I was playing and it just like the sound just was gone. Hello. Uh, the sound just like went away, and I had all of these guys in the front row just decided it was their moment to like tell me how to play guitar, and so they were just like, "Oh, oh, but this is your cable. Let me get you a new cable." And they're like, uh, "They're like messing with knobs on my guitar Man, while I'm like holding away. it and trying to play," <laughs> and I was just like. It turns out it was like my input, like, you know, or like the knobs, like the wiring had just gone busted. And so I just like, I got it fixed and it was fine. But like the, the moment of just like seven men being like, I will be the hero of the gig. And, just Man, yeah, yeah. Had to fix. <laughs> and I just stood there and I was like, okay, well, whatever. I mean, it, it was like, we were the last band playing at this festival in Boston. We were playing um, and it was super fun. The show was 
it was like a really cool show. And I don't actually even like take the the sort of mansplaining of the guitar as a as a you know that that didn't even sour how I felt about that show. That show was so great, um, but it was just really funny. But it was like all these guys. I'm like, oh yeah, you're gonna fix it right now, right here. That's what you're gonna do. <laughs> so, yep. It yeah. was really funny. <laughs> I'd be like, here, check out this boot. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we stick it up your ass. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, that would have been good, but I think I was just so stunned by the whole thing. I, I was can't like, see why. Like, <laughs> saying that to anybody, though. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you never know. Sometimes when yeah. you have to like embody rock star persona, like sometimes things get a little bit like, you know, you can sort of put on the the like mental body armor of like I'm a rock star. Like yeah, yeah. I push people around and I'm like a big leather jacket. <laughs> like yeah. I tell people what to do. Um uh, but that's not mm. that common. Uh when your dad was here one time mm. uh we went grocery shopping and he had he had paid for all the groceries. And this is mm. when he still work at the Pentagon. And uh, oh sure yeah. And uh he had paid for the groceries. He goes, man, I'm sorry. I don't want to piss you off. I said, I don't want to piss you off. You have a plane fly over the house and blow us up, man. I'm good. <laughs> Go ahead and pay for the groceries. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, no, that's yeah. always, that was kind of always a fun thing whenever I'd like, you know, bring a boyfriend home. I, they, you know, my dad would always make sure to mention, he's like, yeah, you know, we don't have any guns in the house, but I do have a really big sword, like a real sword, <laughs> like that he has just under the bed, just a sword. Yeah. <laughs> just like, I'm just like, oh, okay, <laughs> cool. Thanks, Love dad. dad. Really helping. Um, <laughs> a sword. I'm going down to Columbia in two weeks to go see uh, oh, cool. Municipal Waste and Ghoul. And I had asked Stu if he wanted nice. to go. Uh, I, I, I know oh, Stu's. he has to go. No, he's not into go. that stuff, and he what? said he, he said he's actually he's actually having like a, a, a party at his house that night or something. So, oh, Stu really? Now. He's a consummate host. He hosts a lot, and he, he he like has a bunch of friends from his like D and D group that he hosts often, and like yeah, they're like really popular. <laughs> oh, wow, so cool, man. He was <laughs> I know, he was like, here for uh, for the family gathering. That dude's taller yeah. than me. I'm six foot Stu's, three, and he's. I'm like, hey, what's up, dude? Stu's huge. <laughs> Stu is no, yeah. uh, every time I talk to talk about Stu to anybody, I'm just like, oh yeah, my little brother. He's like seven foot four, probably. Like, you know, my little brother's like eight feet tall, basically. Yeah. Like, I'm just like, I don't know how tall he's. He's huge. He's yeah, I saw him. He goes. He goes, uh, he goes. Sorry for growing taller than you. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you apologizing to me? <laughs> I know he just, and it was, it took him a little while too. Cause it was like, yeah, he just kind of shot up like a weed, like yeah. kind of late in the game, but yeah, he's very I mean, tall. <laughs> I've, I've, I've seen you in the past 10 years, but mm -hmm, last right. time I had seen him, he was like a kid. Yeah. He yeah. Was, totally. Like a little baby. A, yeah. A little dude. Yeah. And then I was like, Oh my God. I mean, wow. Uh, yeah. So, it's really disorienting. <laughs> I think we're about to uh, wrap this up for the week. Um, cool. I know you guys said you're not touring any, anytime soon, but you're putting no, out not some, soon, but we will be. some new merch on, online, right? Yep. We'll okay. have some merch on our website here pretty soon, as soon as we figure out how to put it on our website, um, which is my job. <laughs> I do website, so I have to figure out how to do it. Okay. Um, I think we'll just do like Shopify or something. Um, so we're going to have that out soon. And then, you know, we're working on music in our distributed manner. Um, you know, we've got collection that came out last year. Um, we might have a couple of like little treats as like little single reworks coming out, but nothing that I want to spoil just yet. So okay. maybe stay tuned for that. All right. Um, uh, where can people and, find your stuff? What's your yeah. website and uh, where can we so, buy your vinyl? Yeah, totally. So uh, our vinyl, the best place to buy it is through Fire Talk Records, which is the label that we're part of, um, which I highly recommend checking out other Fire Talk bands too. Lots of really cool bands there. So if you go to firetalkrecords.com, you'll be able to do that. Um, and then our website is patio.com.com. So it's patio, D-O-T-C-O-M, dot com. Okay. Dot com. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so you can find all of our links to like our Bandcamp and Spotify and Apple Music and all that stuff uh, is all there. And you can watch our one music video for six months on YouTube. And the social media platform we use the most is Instagram because we don't understand. We're old. Like, I don't do TikTok, but we also have a newsletter. Um, yeah. She said she's old. Yeah, man. That's how old. Yeah. I can't figure it out. It makes me feel ancient when I go on yeah. TikTok. I'm like, oh, what yeah. are the kids doing these days? Um, but yeah, but Substack, uh, we just launched a newsletter. So we'll be writing some, like, you know, fun little things on there. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for being on the show, Lindsay. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. And thanks so much for. Being diehard patio supporters from day absolutely, one. Really absolutely. appreciate it. Tell Kathy and Brooklyn and, uh, and everybody I said, hey. I will. 
Thank you. See you later. Later, y'all. I'll see you tomorrow, artist. All right. See you tomorrow. Right. Later. Good night, everyone. Bye bye. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> it's my first disco song. <laughs> <laughs>